Hello, and welcome to a second-hand Centipede Press Unboxing. That might be a horror story, because this is coming from the UK, and, uh, you know, the best way to ship things from overseas is in a bubble mailer. Although, I do see that he did use a little bit of cardboard inside the bubble mailer, so, uh, we'll see how this goes. This is I Wake Up Screaming by Steve Fisher. Uh, it's an early... Centipede Press title from 2009, so 15 years ago, this this puppy was published, and uh, yeah, hopefully this thin cocoon of cardboard did the trick, and we won't have a book that is beat up beyond belief. Oh, but don't worry, it's also in a plastic bag to really help preserve it, safety first, as the bag will tell you. This is not a toy. Uh, I do know the book itself had a little bit of wear to it, so I'm expecting it to have a little wear. Um, I don't know if that top... I'll have to go back and look at the photos. If that bumpage uh, was in the photos when this was sold, or if that's a matter of the shipping, which it could very well be a matter of the shipping. Uh, it'd be unfortunate if that is the case. Because, like I said, he chipped it in a bag, in a very thin box, in a, a, a mailer. So that's, uh, yeah, a little disappointing in that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's not terrible for a 15-year-old book. Let's dive in. You know, some bumpage to the corners itself. I Wake Up Screaming is a noir novel. Uh, that was the basis for a film of the same name. Uh, I don't know much about the novel. I know it deals with being a noir novel. Probably deals with a private eye investigating a murder. I believe it is a murder of the murder of an actress, uh, based on the uh, brief synopsis that I read of the film. Uh, this does have an introduction by Keith Allen Deutsch. And I know it does include a whole bunch of extra material. Uh, so we have the introduction by Deutsch, we have Wake Up Screaming, and we have a whole bunch of other short stories uh, by Fisher, which is terrific. Um, I know it has a bunch of archival covers and artwork from the Black Mask, I believe. Yep, there we have. We have Black Mask cover right there. I don't know if this is where it was originally published within. You know, maybe it was a serialized novel. But, uh, you know, it was a great price. Exceptional price, which is unfortunate uh, that it was shipped the way it was. <laughs> uh, is that the end of the novel? That is the end of the novel. So, man, the novel is a short little read. Uh, but look at where we are, page-wise. That is halfway, less than halfway. So the novel is less than halfway of the contents of this book. Then we jump right into the short stories, including Murder at Eight, which was published, I don't see a date, I know this was December, I was going to say it was published in Black Mask in August 1937, this was a December issue, otherwise I'd say, oh, it's cool, he has the uh, original issue. And these do have some very deep margins as well, so it's, uh, there's a lot, you know, oh, there we go, another one, no, no Gentleman Strangles His Wife. Originally published in Black Mask, January 1938. So, man, you really get a lot of bang for your buck here. Uh, I believe this is rather pricey on the secondary market. Uh, I just happened to get lucky in that I was watching this guy on uh, eBay. And uh, being a book being shipped from the UK and being in, you know, pounds, uh, they don't really get the same pull or attention as the U.S. ones did, and so I just happened to get lucky with this one. Although, I mean, it, here lies a rat. I love it. Um, although, like I said, it, it, as you saw in the video here, it wasn't shipped in the best circumstances, uh, but, you know, it's play it again, Sam Spade. Oh, I love it. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I don't know if... I imagine this is an unsigned copy. I mean, there is no signature sheet in the back. Uh, on the website, it did say it was limited to... It said 250 in the block of text. It said 200 in the description on the right. 
Uh, but it didn't necessarily specify that those were numbered or that they were signed. Um, obviously, Steve Fisher uh, is not around to sign it. I mean, Deutsch, I suppose, could. Uh, there's not really any original artwork for it. It's all reprinted artwork. So I don't know who would sign it other than perhaps doing a facsimile for Fisher. Uh, but this is an older Centipede Press title, so it might just predate... Uh, I don't want to say it predates signatures, because, I mean, technically the earliest title, uh, which was Stigmata by uh, Centipede Press. I don't even think that was actually Centipede at that point. I think it was, uh, it wasn't Millipede, but he was going under a different press name for that. Uh, I know there was a signed edition for Stigmata, so it's not like he wasn't doing signed editions, but uh, I don't know for certain if this one had a signed or numbered edition or if it was just unnumbered. Uh, I should have probably, you know, done a little more research on that, but uh, I wanted to... Uh, you know, get the unboxing on camera first in case this was a real horror story. I mean, it wasn't a pretty one, but, you know, it could have ended much worse. And for the price I paid, I think it's still a very good value, even if the, uh, you know, you could have taken more care at shipping it across the sea. Uh, but anyways, uh, check out Centipede Press. They do an incredible job with their titles. Uh, their books don't really look like this anymore. Uh, they've kind of changed style uh, to being like a full cloth binding. Uh, it be a nice, nice sewn binding that you get to help you know keep this book lasting nicely over the years. Uh, a couple of the bigger titles that they just did are a couple of classic titles, including Frankenstein featuring Bernie Wrightson's artwork and Alice in Wonderland featuring Salvador Dali's artwork. Uh, Frankenstein is still available. It's a very, very hefty price point, uh, but uh, Alice in Wonderland sold out within an hour. But if you want to check out Alice in Wonderland, subscribe to the channel because I will have a copy coming my way. Uh, one day I will have Frankenstein hopefully coming my way as well, but uh, my wallet needs to recover first. Um, so fingers crossed that, you know, that copy is still available uh, when I am able to eventually purchase it. Uh, but anyways, if you want to check out some other great Centipede Press titles, I just did a handful of them on the channel, including, uh, oh my god, Son of the Endless Night, and including uh, Hellstone. Both exceptional titles, both are still available, as well as the Hell Candidate I just did recently, too. I think that one's still available as well. Uh, but check out Centipede Press. They do an exceptional job with their books. Uh, or if you want to just live vicariously through me, uh, then subscribe to the channel. I will continue to unbox them as I continue to get them. Uh, once I read the titles, I will do a book review on them, well, which I do at least one book review a week. Uh, but, you know, plenty of content there for you to be entertained with. So anyways, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you around next time.